Now, just what do you do with a disused suburban bus depot these days? Well, turn it into an art space, of course, and that's just what seven Melbourne artists have been doing. They've been asked to create work that responds specifically to the old Dandenong depot, and they've got just a week to do it before it's demolished and gone forever. What we've essentially got here is uh, seven artists working for seven days on a bus depot that's due for uh, demolition and we'll have a, an opening on the seventh day. It is a really ambitious project. Uh, sometimes that's where the most exciting things in life happen though, at that ragged edge. This is the bathroom. Wow. Yeah, we've given ourselves a pretty right. short time frame for this project. I think there's something really important for an artist about the you know, the quick response, and often it's the, when the freshest, you know, best work happens. It's pressure, and the pressure makes diamonds. I like the idea that under this pressure there is a chance of failing, but I think there's a huge chance of great success. Grenders have entrusted us with this entire site that they've had in their occupation since 1945, and they've handed the whole place over to us. Why we're doing the project is really uh, taking a, a look at a workplace and a place where people have spent hours and years of their lives uh, being here and, and living and existing in a workplace, delivering a, a really essential bus service to the Danon community. It's really about highlighting the ordinary and making that appear extraordinary. Yeah, if these walls could talk, there'd be some fantastic stories coming out. When I walked into this workshop, this is great. It was just a really pure way to enter this site. I felt comfortable in here. If someone can walk into a room like this and take a look at what's around, now I see it as just vinyl for, for seats or whatever, and they can use their brain to twist it into something that's off centre, that, that's pretty clever. I've sort of gravitated to this area because um, Sort of like the like it being such a you know the hub of uh, activity in a way. Like the buses are swirling around down there, and we're sort of in the eye of the storm up here. I don't know where to get these weird ideas from. Fair income, you know. I mean, um, there's art and there's art, but if they call that art, well, good on them. Trust is a really key aspect to this project because the artists can only specify to a certain extent what they're planning to do. So we need to trust in the ideas that they have. And that's kind of challenging for a local government because we're quite used to specifying everything and having everything sort of written down and followed to a T. It's like a little bit late to go. You'll probably miss this safety induction. Will she? No, Susan had that problem at 11. Great. OK. Good. What would be your worst nightmare on this project? <laughs> well, being filmed. <laughs> Or actually piercing the roof and coming into the room. So you can have a wind motion that's in the room without the wind. You know, I think the, the drivers will be just delighted, you know, with seeing some big holes cut through to the manager's offices. Well, there's no going back now, is there? <laughs> I've done something. Well, we'll see how it all pans out. This place here, this is the old Grenders bus wash. These rollers are quite old and brittle. They're not going to use them over at the new Grenders. So, They've given them to me to use, and I'm going to um, uh, try and create some sort of action painting scenario. We're going to come in from like the right on the boundary up there, and then paint a series of lines, and then come out on, onto the other side. It'll definitely create what we do try to explore in our work, where we try and you know create a kind of a glitch or a slippage in the building or the, the site itself. The reason I'm drawn to this space and the adjacent space is that 
you know, it sort of presents these um, tonal variations. I mean, that's so black and this is so white. I quite like the irony of these two spaces being so close together. So I like this process of cutting up the carpet and sort of, you know, channeling the upholsterer. I'm thinking of maybe calling the whole piece uh, the upholsterer will fix it. This project is so challenging because it's about fluidity and allowing people to respond to a site matched up with a bureaucracy and, a, and an organisation that's all about regulation and process and procedure and safety and so on. So it's a clashing of those sort of opposite things and trying to make something in the middle work. All we want to do is expose structure rather than cutting through structure and I think that they've been a bit worried as to that we're going to make the building unsafe. And I think with the whole bureaucracy of it, I guess we're sort of finding where we're going to end up rather than sort of what we initially planned, you know, and just try and work around it. It's a very physically demanding site. There's a lot of running around and it's no easy way to get around. Yesterday I was trying to run um, some paint. I hope it didn't block it. I don't think it did. Well, it's there, right? Yeah. It's pretty stressful, but I'm trying to work in a way that, that gives me energy. Completing the whole project in a week does seem, well, it seems kind of ludicrous. But unfortunately, there's just no other way. I mean, the pressures at work here, like the wear sort of sandwiched in between, are pretty enormous. It's definitely pumping, but I'm not covered in yellow paint. I think everyone's getting a little bit exhausted now that we've hit day five. Oh, this afternoon, I've got to get up on top of the roof and put up the wind catches, which is like the pivotal part of my work. Uh, I'm a bit nervous about it because it's like the windiest day of the year. It's today. If it's a wind sculpture, I should really do it in the wind, I suppose. What I'll do now is rule up these cuts, and that's where I'll pretty much cut through with a circular saw, and that'll allow me to bend these around in segments um, and get a bit of shape to the form. Um, it's a bit of a gale force up there. So I think it's a bit crazy. But um, I was hoping to get a good drawing out of the wind today. That was meant to go across <laughs> here, and now it's over there. <laughs> I have no idea what it's doing. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, coming in so late, it feels like I've uh, really missed out on, um, on a bit. You know, seeing how much everyone's done just blew me away. But while I've been building the work, the, the site has been very much in my mind and, you know, the work is specifically for it. The main idea with, with these pieces is they're just disregarded objects. It's that sort of feeling of people leaving a place of work and this is the disregarded objects that are just left behind. It's been really intense, but today um, everything sort of got cleared safety-wise, so I feel much better about that. We've bitten off more than we can chew, as usual, but no, we'll get there. I mean, we'd all like another week to kind of tweak everything, and we've sort of started to settle into the place and feel like it's becoming a studio now, so, uh, you know, we'd love a bit more time, of course. But I think it's been absolutely achieved. I'm really thrilled with what everybody's come up with. All the works are kind of multi-layered and, and complex works that, you know, at first appearance, may strike you as something, but then after a couple of minutes they grow on you and you start to realise the, the scale of them. And, um, and then, you know, as a, as a relationship, all the works are interesting how they sort of bounce off one another and, and mean different things in relation to one another. So they work in tandem very well. Now that everybody's finished their work, you realise that it's not about entropy, it's actually about new life coming into the place, you know, and, and that's what's so exciting now. It's sort of come to life in a different way. And uh, I think we've worked pretty well as a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I'm, look, incredibly happy. Hopefully other people will see it and feel inspired to think about historic sites in a different way, to honour local businesses in a different way. Uh, to engage and trust artists in a different way. And uh, if, if we can set a vision like that for other people, that would be wonderful.
I'd really like people to respond to this work as, you know, um, being open to experience. That's, that's my philosophy on these issues because it's not like you have to know a lot about art or even anything about art, but it's, it's very different art from the kind of thing most people think art is. With all of us, we have that sort of, I suppose, raw emotion that we do care what the audience thinks. I came here last Thursday after the, after the big windstorm and I thought, holy hell, you've got a job to do. Um, but to their credit, they've finished their works, they've cleaned it all up, and, and it's a fantastic job. Um, I'm feeling a bit nervous because I didn't actually do the trial run I thought I was going to do. So um, I've got no idea if this is going to work or not. Absolutely no idea, hence the disguise. <laughs> Words escape me at this stage. <laughs> that was great. Did you like it? Yes. Oh, okay. it was wonderful. Yeah, yes. great. Well, it's all your hard work. No, it's your hard work. No. God. Art. God, love a duck. What the artists have done is just off the wall, totally. Unbelievable, really, mm -hmm. as to what they've actually done to it. Yes, it does remind me a bit of cutting into the material, to cutting out the shapes of the different seats and patterns and things. The owner just told me these lines and the way everything is sort of cut, and it's supposed to mean that th these are lines that go to our new depot. That's a fact, that's great. You know, it starts to make sense now. And we'll come back here when it's a bridge and have a drink under the bridge, <laughs> right here. Right.